What's going on, my people? I'm your host, Double R, and you're now tuned in to Retro Rob Television. So, many of us have been paying close attention and following this whole soap opera between rapper 50 Cent, real name Curtis Jackson, and his firstborn by the name of Marquise Jackson. And it's very, very, very sad. You know, although 50 Cent makes a lot of valid points with the interview between him and TMZ's Van Lathan, um, that's still your son at the end of the day, 50. That's still your son, man. And he's really just a cry for help. You know, he just really, like when you're out, when you're saying that he's, you know, getting close and he's hanging with your enemies and stuff like that, that's really a cry for attention, man. That's really cry for help. Like some parents out here think they could just toss money and materialistic things at their kids and that and that'll solve everything. That'll heal all the wounds, man. But it really only makes those wounds bigger. As we're witnessing with Floyd Mayweather and his daughter Yaya. You know, um me myself coming up not having both my neither my mother nor my father, you know, especially your father, especially in the so-called black community where many of our fathers are not present because, you know, although it's their fault, but also society pushing that narrative, you know, and a lot of the women running, running with it. Um, and I know a lot of women hate to hear this, but a woman cannot impact the household like the man. Now, women in their own right can impact the household, but not quite like, a man could like if your mother I've witnessed situations where my friend's mother or grandmother say go take out the trash such and such a and that person either take their time or they don't move at all but when they father coming in and say man take out that dag on trash you heard your mother they jump up quick the father just got a different um he just got a different uh feel about him you feel me a different energy about him you know, is is an authoritative energy, and and women do as well. But nevertheless, he's just a cry for help. Fifty, that's all he is, man. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and break down this interview with Van Lathan as we go. So let's pay attention, people. All right. So while being a privileged child, he feels deprived. When you had everything, I didn't have. I can tell you how much my kids cost in New York State, one point three sixty. And not to say it's this situation, but a lot of parents subconsciously do little things to their kids in a in a negative way because out of jealousy. You know, and I've witnessed this in my personal childhood where they like, man, I ain't had none of this. And I was watching an interview yesterday with uh uh Vlad T V. And Boosie. And Boosie says something very important. He said, at the end of the day, I have did just about everything I wanted to do. You know, I've accomplished just about everything I wanted to accomplish. Now I want my kids to reap the benefits of it. See, a lot of, you know, not just parents, but a lot of elders don't understand is that your job is to pave the way for the next generation. Your job isn't to hold on. Like you got a lot of these old people always talking about what the kids ain't doing and the kids. At the end of the day, why don't your old ass retire and let a position open up so a kid can slide into that position? In other words, if you're not going to help the problem or at least try, don't be a part of it. You know, but 50 with 50 saying that, man, a lot of not saying this is in 50 case, but a lot of parents because they didn't wasn't blessed and wasn't fortunate to have things that, you know, they've created in a lifestyle that they created for their kids today, they subconsciously feel envious of their child because they themselves didn't have that. But you gotta look at it this way. It was your lifestyle, although it was un unfortunate, it was your lifestyle that created you into the person that you are today that basically helped you to provide the lifestyle a better lifestyle for your child 
You know, we can't always look at things in a negative way. But a lot of us, although we don't want to admit it because some of us don't really know that we're doing that, but we build a bit of jealousy towards our kids because they're living a much better lifestyle than we did. You feel me? That should, that should, that should, that should be fulfillment. That shouldn't be something that should be a, a bad thing. Let's continue. You see what I'm saying? And, and I don't have an issue with paying the support. The reason why I'm the way I am with, with those kind of situations, I pay my support that year that the baby's born. Move the money to the account. Let it, it. See, the problem I have with this with 50 Cent is the fact that 50 Cent is keep talking about about money and what he spent and what he's done. You feel me? Like, a person's action speaks a thousand words. You could say one thing, but your actions are showing a whole nother side of you. You know, why even, why even throw that out there? Oh, I paid this. I paid my support one time. At the end of the day, you want a cookie for that? At the end of the day, that's what you're supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to do. I want y'all to understand this. That, uh, what your parents do for you, that's their job. Like I see a lot of kids and stuff and a lot of people, uh, people that were kids, they get older now. And they be like, well, if my mother wouldn't have did this for me. My father wouldn't have did that. At the end of the day, that was their job because they had you. So they're obligated. It's their duty to make sure that they raise you up right if they're a good parent. It's not, it's not something that uh, you should be grateful of. Now, I know a lot of y'all are grateful that you had good parents, and you should be, but you shouldn't be grateful that your parent did what they supposed to do, did what they signed up to do, which means had, had and procreate with some, procreated with somebody else to have you. So that is their duty, in my opinion, for the rest of your life. But it's some other people's opinion for the next 18 to 21 years. Now, it is your, it is your uh, decision to make sure you return that favor or whether or not you want to return that favor. That is your decision. But it is not your parents' decision on whether or not they want to provide for you. It is their right to do it. It is their obligation to do it. Let's continue. But I just I just wanted to I just wanted to break that part down because I, I'm noticing 50 cent and it's sending it's sending a bad message and it has been sending a bad message. I know. To Marquise, that is all about money to you. And they, as they say, we're going to get into that in a minute with the baby mother. Let's go. And it automatically disperses certain amount of money per, per, you know, each, each month. So with, with him, I, I, I noticed over the years, like it developed, because I've lived on his mom for a long time. But it's not his mother, it's him. Like I'm going places where he was at and left. No, it's not him, it's his mother. At the end of the day, he didn't ask to be here. You and his mother made him. So at the end of the day, and I want to say this too. At the end of the day, what you have to, as the great saying goes, I want to get it right. What you did to get her is what you had to do to keep her. So if you got her by using your money and, and, and which you, you, you hustling and stuff like that, that's what attracted her. That's what it would have taken to keep her. But in reality, um, I just personally believe with those type of women, and I don't know uh, Marquise's mother, 50 said baby mama, but they would stay with you regardless. I think it was more so her feeling bitter because 50 Cent, you know, not only got the fame, but 50 Cent left her. And she thought she was going to live happily ever after with him. That's the issue. And now she feel bitter, just like most of these women do, these exes do. And now she's out for blood. She won't rest until 50 Cent owes her and her owes her. I mean, 50 Cent pays her in her mind every dime that he owes her, which is really nothing. But that's the mentality of the woman. 
Not every woman, but that kind of woman. Let's continue. Shit, you know you something? I used to. You ask yourself how long a couple. Listen to this. Van Lathan said, 50, 50, do you love your son? He said, I used to. I used to. You ask yourself, you know you I used to. You ask yourself how long a complicated question would say, how long can you love something that don't love you back? Mm. If it's your son, forever. If it's your son, forever. It don't matter whether or not he love you back. At the end of the day, it's a lot of pain. A lot of pain that you contribute to. You and his mother. So forever. And see, that's the issue right there. That's the issue right there. Is that 50 is now um, trying to present a false perception that it's his son that's the issue. When it was 50 tossing his son money in materialistic things. Thinking he was pleasing him. I understand 50 was out there grinding. I understand 50 was out there trying to make a way. Trying to make a, make a, you know, a better life that he didn't have. But at the end of the day, now that you've done it and you're still doing it, man, go get that boy. If that was my son, I'd go get him and say, man, quit all that bullshit. You coming with me. Make sure he clean. Make sure he good. Not just material-wise, but make sure he's set up. So that he can become an entrepreneur just like you and pick up where you where you gonna leave when you gonna leave off because there ain't nothing guaranteed. We all guaranteed to die. That's what I would go do if I was his father. I'd go say, Marquise, quit that bullshit. Let's go. You coming with me. You coming with me. But you know, how how could you blame Marquise? How could you blame him? When you sitting up in an interview talking about man. You don't, you don't love him no more. Or you don't care about him no more. In his mind, you ain't never cared about him. In your mind, like, I, didn't, I paid child support. I did this and did that. 50, your problem is with his mother. His mother's problem is with you. The son ain't got shit to do with it. Your problem is that she's getting you for, for, she's getting you for, all, you's wor for all you worth. Trying to take every dime you got because she thought she was going to live happily ever after with you. And it didn't work out like that. And your issue with her is that she's trying to take every dime from you. And she's making it about the child when it really ain't about the child. It's about her. And you're trying to make it about Marquise when it really ain't about Marquise. It's about you and it's about your disdain towards her because she's trying to get in, dip into your pockets. That's what the problem is. But both of y'all are using, like most parents do, your child as a shield. Using your child as a bargaining tool. Using your child as a way out of y'all having that conversation and coming, and, and coming to a conclusion for the betterment of Marquise. You ain't got to never see her ever in life. But you can see, you got to see her because that's your, that's your child, but you ain't really got to deal with her like that. Come on now. I thought you were smarter than that, 50. And I always tell y'all, although these celebrities are very, very talented at what they do, they are never smart where it counts. They are never smart where it counts. You know, that's who they keep, they surround themselves with. That's the bigger picture. They never see the bigger picture. The bigger picture is that's your son. And your son ain't, ain't, ain't asked to be in this world. But now that he is in this world, you got to love him with all that you got. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's me, people. Maybe it's me. Let's continue. You see, so in, in this experience, you look and you say, I, I didn't think success would cost me my firstborn. But it's success didn't call you, cost you your firstborn. Your mentality is costing you your firstborn, 50. Your mentality. What is that mentality, you ask? It's all about money to you. It's all about notoriety to you. You chasing money and notoriety so much that you can't even see how badly your son is hurting. Let's go. 
the situation it's like my grandfather would say if I don't like a snake if it's slither like a snake is it a snake or do you need to be bit right and that's that's sad he's referring to his son as a snake well if we gonna go that route I ain't want to say it, but if we going to go that route, then you looking right in the mirror. You looking right in the mirror. Because if he's a snake, then, then you got to be an anaconda or something. You got to be something way more vicious than that. You feel me? So, man, it's, it's just this mentality that, and the reason why I'm doing this video, because that's how my mother think. That's how my father thought. That's how a lot of kids, although they don't want to admit it, and, and grown people, parents think. It's so much about them that they don't realize how badly it's affecting the kids and how much the kids are hurting. And again, I'm going to reiterate. We're seeing it with Muddy Mayweather, with Yaya. You feel me? So let's go. Let's let's continue, man. To ape in South Carolina and of this the country. You know what I'm saying? And what he keeps saying is every time you see a boy, you see show up with somebody you got a problem. What does that do? People will always try to make relationships on a common bond of disliking someone. Like be friends with you because your enemy is my enemy. Yeah. And he sees himself that way. To the extent where he's, he's actually taking pictures with cream son or, or doing different things that and you go well i'm like i don't even understand where your motivation comes from with these things but at the end of the day he's taking pictures with preem son and all that at the end of the day that situation with preem is what you created your son is what you created the situation between you and your son is what you created 50. you must clean that up at some point you must clean that up instead of instead of pointing the finger at everybody else but the person that, that created this whole situation. You feel some type of way that so fucking what? That he hanging with your enemies and all. So that's your son. You supposed to put that shit in line, man. You supposed to go to your son and say, man, come on. You out here tripping. You supposed to show him the way. And that's the problem today. A lot of these elders are complaining. You know why? You know why a lot of these elders are complaining about the youth? Because the youth is a reflection of their failures, of their poor planning. They didn't plan. They didn't help to build or help plan for the generations to come. And they, now that they see it, they, they're not liking what they see because it's a reflection of what they they could, but didn't, and should have done. But wasn't in a position to do it. Because th then themselves, they didn't have their lives corrected. They didn't have their lives straight. And now it's going to be generations of people like Marquise and, and all of these, these this youth that's coming up. That's going to be, that's going to have the same excuses that 50 and so many parents have today with their children. Let's continue. Can you excuse any of that because of how young he is? No, he's 23 years old, 24 years old. That's the wrong question. Can you excuse any of that because he is your son? Forget how old he is and forget whether or not, and I see 50 about to go there, forget whether or not he's grown. That's still your son, 50. That is the issue. You know, but somewhere, somewhere in 50 life, I know his mother died when he was real young, dealing in, dibbling and dabbling in the streets. 50 ain't really know his real father. You see the trickle down effect? And we spend so much time complaining about what our people didn't do for us that now we starting to do the same thing to our kids. We becoming the people that we despise. And guess what's going to happen? Marquise and the rest of those kids are going to do the same thing. It's not a baby no more. It's a grown man. See, they, I look at... 
He may not be he may not be a baby in the physical, but he's still a baby in the mental. Because his father didn't teach him how to be a grown man in the mental, because his father is still a baby in the mental. You get the trickle down effect? Y'all gonna make me get into a mode, man. I don't like stuff like this. You as you grow, the decisions that you make, as you start to pass what they would have did to us, they would have they would have charged me like an adult at fifteen. So at twenty three, it's like you grown, bro, in my head. In his head, Marquise has grown because in fifties in fifties uh world, when he was coming up, he was grown. But is that a testament to your lifestyle or that's a testament to the position you was in or the position that you put yourself in? See, that's what we do as people. We put ourselves in, into unfortunate positions and then we point the finger at everybody else and we try to find a way to escape the reality. And that reality is we are in our own motherfucking way. Marquise ain't asked to be here again from you or his mother. But your problem is not with Marquise. Your problem is with his mother and your problem subconsciously is with yourself. And the quicker and the sooner that you get that 50, the better off you'll be in your relationship will be with your son. But I don't I don't see this coming back together because 50 has the wrong mentality. He has the wrong mentality. And obviously his mind is more so on money and his appeal than his firstborn, as he say. And apparently his mother's mentality is on, get, on, on getting her get back on 50. Because she thought her and 50 was going to ride off into the sunset and live happily ever after. But 50 had other plans. And those plans didn't include her and apparently his son. 